So, boys, what do we make of this? Tim, you're the, you're the manager, you're managing Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Look, we don't know the full details, but we certainly do know in the past that he's had timekeeping issues. Thomas mm. Tuchel talked about it when he coached him at Borussia Dortmund, and it was the same issue uh, at the North London derby, wasn't it, last season, March, when he was dropped mm. to the bench and didn't even get on the pitch. What do you do with him now? Right decision to firstly take the captaincy off him? Uh, yeah, I think if he, he's a repeat offender here, isn't he? You know, he's that, it's not the first time he's done it. The young boys there, they've got a wonderful academy there. They're bringing the boys through and the academy players, Smith Rowe, Saka, mm. you know, they're their best players, you know, but they're the ones who are meant to be looking up to their skipper, whoever he is. Um, I don't think they've had a good time with captains. Xhaka was the last one. You know, he starts throwing his armband down. And well, that's a great point. Do you know what? I, I read something this morning, actually going all the way back to William Gallas. Yeah. They haven't had really successful captains for, for various reasons, mm. for injuries, you know, for, for breaches of discipline. They're yeah. since Fabregas people, you know, who are out and then mm. suddenly off to Barcelona. I mean, going back to sort of Tony Adams with the yeah. days where they last had a captain that they could rely on. Well, when Mikel was gone in there, he obviously, he had an eye on the academy. He knew there was his good young players coming through and they've still got a few there in the academy it's very hot mm. um, but you need good types good experienced pros I, I always say that I think your young kids are only as good as your experienced pros and and they've tried it with David Luiz and Willian mm. um, didn't materialise to be good citizens mm. really no, that did okay I think Luiz was probably better than, better than uh, Willian um, but it's really difficult to find these types of characters. And mm. I think Mikel's finding it difficult. He perhaps thought by giving Aubameyang the armband he might show a little bit more responsibility um, and help with the group. I think Lagazette looks like he's possibly the better person out of all of them and, and more influence on, on the younger group coming through. Mm. Um, but you'd have to say he's done the right thing. I mean, he, he has to show, make a stand. He has to leave him out. I know a lot of managers who would turn a blind eye, but mm. they would turn a blind eye possibly if the player was performing better yeah. than Aubameyang. He hasn't performed for a very long time now. And like I say, the best players at Arsenal are the academy boys. Yeah. Take us inside a dressing room then, Glenn. What would that be like if you, you know, your captain is, is being disciplined and kind of what example that sets to the other players at the, the football club? I think probably when you've got such a young, mouldable group of players and your captain's messing around for whatever reason, mm. they feel as though it's their right for them to mess around. And you don't want that to filter down through your system. That filters down through the, the young lads in the first team into the academy. And it, it's not a good way to go. And uh, Arsenal seem to be getting themselves into this situation of giving a certain type of player massive money, massive contract at the wrong end of their career. Mm. And then it all just gone south from, from that I can point. I the mean, words Mesut Ozil coming yeah, out of well, yeah. saying them. Yeah, yeah no, 100% Mesut Ozil. But is he in it, danger it, of becoming the new... And look, we, have, yeah. we do have to balance it because we don't know the full details, but we do know the previous disciplinary. Is he in danger of fastly becoming the new Ozil at the Emirates? Yes, without any doubt. That, that, that's what it's heading towards. Another big player getting towards the latter stages of his career on massive money, mm. not producing the goods, mm -hmm. top and bottom of it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I heard mumblings of, of him leaving in January, and I think that is the best thing. But it's a massive contract, so someone's going to have to, you know, someone's either going to have to match even, that money or still even, get a fee because he's got two years if, on his contract. Even if you don't match the money, save yourself the, the next two and a half years' heartache mm. because it's a lot more money if he hangs but around. He's within his rights to sit around and hang he around. He is, yes, he? he is, definitely, yeah. without doubt, he is. But yeah, look, they would have learnt a lesson from him, was it? You know, well, it you wasn't thought easy. they would have. <laughs> it wasn't easy, it wasn't easy. Yeah. I mean, now they're in the same problem, but I think it festered with Ozil, uh, and I don't think it will this time. I think they will try to address it. Mm. But like Glenn says, I mean, who wants him? Yeah. Uh, it's not easy to get rid of a player who's on £350,000 a week. Yeah. You know, but you have to get him out your door and save yourself £100,000 possibly and get him out, get him out your dressing mm. room um, and start afresh. You know, let someone subsidise part of his money. I think Arsenal need to do that, need to bite the bullet. When you go back to the captaincy thing, what, does he ever look like a captain to you? No. Well, I mean, as a manager, would you have put him as your captain? No. But from the outside, when I look in now, who is going to be the next one? Well, Tierney is a good shout, isn't he? I, mean, I, know, I know he's not been playing a lot and Nuno Tavares has been playing, but the Arsenal fans, I'm saying, I'm not one of those. I've certainly heard them saying. Aaron Ramsdale, and I know mm. you, you couldn't always make an argument for making a goalkeeper a captain. Dino's off did a good job of it, didn't he? Hugo Lloris has been doing it at Spurs for a while. Gabriel, we're talking yeah. fans' favourites, and, and, and Tierney. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we don't know their personalities. Arteta will see these guys every day on the training yeah. pitch, won't he? And make Absolutely. That That's why he, he'll make his decision. And, and it's, it's basically... It's so that's the small part of it. It's actually throwing him onto the pitch and letting him captain on on the pitch. Mm. I think Mikel has a structure where everyone sticks to it anyway. I don't think he allows the the player the captain on the pitch. Sometimes, if I was see something on the pitch I wasn't happy with, mm. I would change it and I wouldn't 
you know, I'll disregard what the manager said, mm. let him have the argument later, but I would tell perhaps a winger to come inside and play in midfield and I would address it. Mm. I don't think that's like that with a Mikel. Well, you, you were a captain. What, what would you then as a manager look for in a captain, having been both of those? Well, you're I, almost looking for your own spy, aren't you, as well? I don't think it's a spy. I think it's someone who's... Uh, someone you, you can... who knows what you want, mm. philosophy-wise, and also someone that the, uh, the players look up to. Mm. Um, and then you have to be responsible. You only have to lead by example. You mm. might not be a loud person ranting and raving all the time, but I think you need to do the correct things. Yeah. And obviously, um, Pierre's not done it. He's, yeah. a, he's not done the, the correct things. You know, he, he's, he's come out of line a few times and, and Mikel's had to stamp down on him. Now, they've got to move on now and they've got to try and get him out of the football club. But like I say, it's easier said than done. Well, just find out that. Look, we need a two-hour show today because we've got so many topics. But on, on Aubameyang, I heard Ray Parler on the radio when I was driving in today saying what he needs to do is when they next have a meeting, say, look, I want an extra five minutes at the end of the meeting to stand up in front of the players and say that was out of order. I've lost the captaincy, but I'm going to do everything I can to get into this team and to get back to the goal scoring form. He's only got four goals in 14 Premier League. The only sort of way he can come back at Arsenal, Glenn Ray seems to think. That's, uh, that speaks a lot about a character and, and, and that you could only ask him that. I don't know him personally. Could I see him asking to stand in front of a group of younger men and mm. apologise? Your face is saying no. No, I, 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 like I say, I don't know him personally, but I yeah. tend to think he wouldn't, he wouldn't be the kind to, to sit back and, uh, mm. and sort of say sorry. There you go. The, the, the moral of the story is there. Look, don't make your best player your captain just because you, you need to get him a new contract. Then that's kind of what happened. But you want, you, want, you want a player that's, that's a regular, a, a good player and that produces on the field but also leads well off it, don't you, Tim? Yeah. You, you, I mean, he's, he's got to be one of your better players to be a captain. You can't have your right back who doesn't play your captain. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Look, we've got to move on because one of the, um, the contenders for that captain's armband we're going to talk about next. Eyebrows were, of course, raised when Arsenal signed Aaron Ramsdale for £30 million in the summer. But who's laughing now? Seven clean sheets in 13 Premier League appearances this season with their new number one proving the doubters wrong. There were some question marks raised about the transfer in the first place, but you've overcome that entirely. I mean, was that ever in your mind at all? Not really, because the only people I needed to impress or listen to was the staff here um, and my players, my teammates. So um, for me, people can have their opinions and that's what life and football is about. And um, I don't need to worry myself too much about the outside noise. I just focus on what I need to do and whatever their opinion, the coach's opinions are, they're the ones which matter. Do you personally feel you've exceeded your ability this season at Arsenal because some of the saves you're making and also your contribution overall, your distribution, it's breathtaking at times? No, I don't think I've um, exceeded, but I'm definitely flourishing a lot more here. and um, I've still been making them sort of saves in the recent years, but it got a little bit overshadowed. Obviously, we weren't doing as well as a team. <clears throat> And I was probably having to, to make sort of eight to ten saves in every game. So um, a few did slip, slip through the, the cracks. But I, yeah, I'm doing really well at the moment, which I'm very pleased about. And just a base for me to, to excel at. And, and that's what the boss has said. We, we get given game plans, but that's not set in stone. And when, I'm, when I've got the ball personally, it's for me to sort of what my feeling is and what I, what I need to do. So. Um, to have that control and, and things like that, that's, that's a good thing for me and it's, it's working. He's having a great time, isn't he, at the Emirates, Aaron Ramsdale? And look, seven clean sheets in 13 Premier League games since. Do you remember that Norwich match when uh, Len um, Leno was out the team and suddenly Arteta just sort of ripped up the team sheet mm -hmm. and put all the, the new boys in? And he hasn't looked back, Tim, since then, has I he? I think he's done brilliantly. I was, I was one of those people scratching my head thinking, why have they, you know, obviously got limited amount of funds. Why are they spending so much on a goalkeeper who's been relegated three times already in his career? There's a lot of people deleting tweets, a lot of Tottenham fans deleting tweets and even Arsenal fans from back I then. I think he's they? done brilliant. Uh, not only is his shot make uh, saves, uh, everyone, every goalkeeper makes saves, but I think he's dominated his penalty area. I remember they played at Turf Moor and he was brilliant. He was mm. coming and taking crosses, taking pressure off his team. Um, but he has got that, kind of talk, I talked earlier about a connection with the fans, um, which Every fan likes someone who they can look at and think he's giving everything for the cause and he knows what we want. And he's been there such a short space of time and the Arsenal fans love him. He's got yeah. a real great connection with him. It looks like he's, there's a unit there, the, the back four and Ramsdale, 
and they're a team within a team. Yeah. Uh, and they're quite enjoying keeping clean sheets. You know, they take pride in protecting their goal. Mm. And his distribution's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, I, I, we look at, I, obviously Arteta's learnt from the best in Pep Guardiola. I was about to say, Ed, Edison, is he not coaching him like Edison's coached? Yeah, but when Pep, what, did, what was Pep's first thing he ever did when he came Claudio into the Got, yeah, got, yeah, rid, got of, rid of got Joe rid of the England yeah. goalkeeper, yeah. and everyone was like thinking, "How can he do that? Yeah. Get rid of Joe Hart." I mean, he—if anyone ever cemented into the team, it's got to be Joe Hart. But he didn't knew work, he did needed he? something he other than him, so he got rid of him. Mm. He got rid of him. Told he's very honest with him. Joe moved away. He told that to Leno. I need someone else. You're not giving me what I want on the floor. Mm. I think the most important thing for a goalkeeper is to be able to catch it and be able to keep the ball out of the net, yeah. but also. If you're going to play the Mikel Arteta way, you're going to need to play out from the back, and I yeah. think he's the best at it. Yeah, well, a prime example of that was on Saturday. I was at the Emirates for this game. Southampton were brilliant the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Arsenal were useless, and then this happened. This was Arsenal's first shot on target, right? There's 17, I think 16 or 17 passes in this move. But look, Arsenal go all the way back here, Glenn, and it comes to Ramsdale here. And this is kind of you know what you'd see with Manchester City and, and Edison. This is the way that the modern goalkeeper has to play, and what a move this is. Yeah, the, the, the modern goalkeeper, it's, it's so important they can play with his feet because they, like, they <laughs> like to use him as, as, as more of a third centre-back, as a middle centre-back when the, when the two centre-backs split. So it's so important that, that he can get his foot on it, he can play it, he's got vision. And this is what we, we remember from the Arsene Wenger era. This, mm. this is Arsenal of old. this. I mean, the way they've built that through the thirds, passed in the triangles and eventually just ended up tapping it in the back of it. I mean, this is, what, this is Arsene Wenger's dream scenario here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, it's a really interesting London derby, this one, isn't it? Because the race for four f seems absolutely fascinating. Obviously, you've got the top three doing what they're doing. We all thought Manchester United would be in amongst those top three and four places. Not at the moment, but who knows under Rav Rangnick what they can do. But West Ham, uh, you know, already beaten Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham in the Premier League this season. How do you see this one going from a, from a West Ham performance coming across London? Can they make a statement? No, oh, they can. I mean, with real confidence. I, I look at, when I look at teams... And, and from a manager's point of view, I look at West Ham and I think, how many of them would keep me up at night? And I'd have to say, not many. You know, I know what I'm going to get from that group of players. Mm. You know, the, the signings he's made, Suchek, Sufal, you know, Declan Rice, his emergence and improving all the time. Uh, Gerard Bowen's been mm. brilliant. You know, he steps in, you've got Antonio. There's not many of that group there who are not men, who are not, you know, even if they're young in age, I think they're men. I think they're, they're led very well by now. Mm. I think it's a fantastic squad of players what Moyes has got. I think he's doing a tremendous job and I think that they approach any game like they can win it. Mm. You know, like you say, they've took some big scouts already. But they've lost points against Palace, Southampton, Brentford, yeah. Wolves and Brighton. And yeah. that's the concern, that's, isn't it? I, I think that the going to the Emirates suits them tonight. They like a team to come on to them, to yeah. leave a little bit of space in behind. When, when you mention the teams that they haven't done well against, the lower teams in the Premier League, mm -hmm. they're the teams that generally sit in and protect what they've got in the draw. Yeah. West Ham find that a little bit harder to break down, but when a team comes out and plays, they can mm -hmm. get behind, they can get Antonio in. Cresswell's back tonight as well to mm -hmm. add some delivery for him. So I expect uh, West Ham to go to Arsenal and, and really test them. It's been a while since we've seen a Mikel Antonio celebration. Uh, put, don't put baby mm -hmm. in the corner, dirty dancing with a cardboard cutout, etc., etc., swimming down the line. But he hasn't scored since October. And we've said this, I mean, Tim, we, uh, deja vu here. We've had this conversation over the last three years. They need backup for him. They thought they had that in Sebastian Haller. He's obviously gone on to, to Ajax. So they need that depth, don't they, in January? Even if they're going to get Lingard, they need a striker as well. Yes, they do. It seems to work that way. Um, Suchek last year, 10 goals. He's only got two this year. He really helped him with the goal-scoring burden. Yeah. No one seems to have taken that burden off Antonio's shoulders yet mm. this season. I but mean, is that because he was playing, you know, he's now playing deeper? I don't know. Yes, because yeah. I think Declan Rice is further forward, but he's not adding as many goals as Suchek was. Cresswell's they're missing his delivery for, for late arrivals into the box. Mm. But Antonio's actually on track to hit more than what he got last year. Yeah. So it's up to the others adding to him and, and helping him with that goal scoring contribution. Mm. Norwich, Southampton, Watford, the three games after Arsenal, Tim. Mm. That's a nice little run going into the festive period, isn't it? Great run. I mean, they've jockeyed themselves into a really good position. No one expected, and I think they've overachieved. But now they're there, and with the squad that they've got, and, and come January, mm. you know, and I know its centre back position is a, is a problem at the moment. They've got some injuries to some important players. But why would you not give David Moyes your money? I think they they've got the investment now. Mm. I think Tarkovsky is a real possibility in a better them. position to get fourth than Arsenal, West Ham. Uh, 
Oh, very, very good question. Not often we get Sherwood, is it? Very good question. I think it possibly if Arsenal... I, I just think Arsenal could put a run together. I think the consistency lets them down. Yeah. Um, and I think when they lose a game, Arsenal, it, it hits them hard. And mm-hmm. I think they lose two or three, whereas West Ham can dust themselves down and know what they are. So I would say I just lean on the side of West Ham to finish above Arsenal this year. Yeah. I'm not necessarily saying they'll finish fourth because I think Man United might nick that position. Yeah. 